I'm a huge fan of Indian food, but when you think about Indian food, you don't really think about sandwiches, but there actually are a few very popular Indian sandwiches that are rather unique. And I attempted one in season one of the sandwich series, the Bombay sandwich, and my mind was blown with the uniqueness of the flavors and the textures. It was just a different style of sandwich, but the end result was amazing. So today we're going round two with India's most popular sandwich, the Vada Pao. And of course, since this is the sandwich series, we got to make everything from scratch. But before we do that, let's get a little sample of the Vada Pao. I'm heading over to Desi Gala right now. It's right around the corner. We're in the East Village on Avenue B between 10th and 11th Street. Hi, I'm Prevanda Chohan, owner of Desi Gali Restaurants and Catering. I've been in business now in Manhattan for eight years. We have almost three locations. We're opening Queens end of the month, I hope. Fingers crossed. And what got you into cooking in the first place? I started cooking because I couldn't find the taste of home when we first moved to New York 10 years ago. I'm originally from my, uh, Montreal and I come from a great family of cooks, but I never cooked myself until I moved here. So I learned how to cook uh, while watching TV shows like Rachel Ray and Martha Stewart. And well, same with me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I got the proportions right. And once I got the proportions right, we're like, oh, I have something. Let's do something with this and turn this into a business. And Got here it. we are. What are the main characteristics of this place that makes it special? So you come here and you could find a little bit of everything. Mm. So we're here to really satisfy a craving for you. So whether it be pao bhaji or a vada pao or a kachi roll, you would come in with your friends and everyone will find something to eat. Uh, street food was fairly new when I started. It wasn't something that was being done at a, at a restaurant level. It would be like a little appetizer in a northern Indian restaurant, but it wasn't done as the full menu. Mm. So it was really educating. What's a kachi roll? What's a chaat? What's pani puri? Oh, I need you to try pani puri. Okay. Yes. Um, what are these items? And like getting people to try something different than their chicken tikka masala. So really what makes this place special is kind of taking street food, but bringing it to like a dining experience. 100%. Okay. The yes. Vada Pav, would you say that's one of the most popular Indian sandwiches? It is one of the most popular Indian okay. sandwiches. It's something that's found on every street corner in Mumbai. And actually we're from a small village in Gujarat and you could find it there as well. What makes it so popular in India? It's just that it's super quick to eat and it's super tasty and it has a nice little kick to it and a sweetness. So people could just grab and go and go back to work and still feel satisfied. Oh, okay. so they're already battered. flash fried yeah. and battered. Okay. If not, they're not going to hold shape. Oh, got it. So yeah. you make them, you fry them on the spot yeah. and then you like double seconds. fry them basically. Yeah. And that's how I'm gonna get the crispiness on them. Rija, can you go down and get me Mumbai Pao from the walk-in fridge? What's Mumbai Pao? It's gonna be the bun that the Vada Pao is gonna go in. Okay. So how it differs from slider buns is that it's fluffier. So it's used for Vada Pao, Pao Bhaji. I use it for sliders. So do you think this would be the most popular street bread yes. in India? Yes, Everything tastes better with clarified mm -hmm. butter. The first variation has red garlic chutney. And this is the way I prefer eating it. So this is the way I serve it in the restaurant. You say chutney, but it's pretty much a spice. It's a dry mix. chutney. Yeah. Dry chutney. Yeah. Got it. Then we have my signature tamarind chutney. This is like your signature sauce. Is this something you would find on a vada pav? Oh, yes. It's just, 100%. Okay. 100%. So then we take the potato fritter and just place it on top. I smush it a bit. Et voila. Okay, so this right here is your signature one? Yeah. And, and then, then what's this next one? Uh, a variation that's also found on the streets of Mumbai. Okay. Sliced red onion, minced cilantro chutney. The fritter's gonna go on top. I'm gonna smush it again. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some chaat masala over it. Ah. And then you just wow. close it up. And it's a very unique sandwich it because is. it's carbs on uh, carbs. carbs. Yeah. But who doesn't love carbs on carbs, especially in this country? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right? So when people taste it for the first time, what are their reactions generally? Oh, reactions like, wow, you yeah. satisfied my India taste. Or like, ah. oh, I remember eating this when I was a kid, when I used to go visit my grandmother. Yeah. So it's something that really satisfied that memory and that craving at the same time. 
The culinary Indian gods are speaking to me right now because I just got done at Desi Gali, randomly walking down this street and came to this place, one of my favorite Indian stores in the whole city. So I'm just gonna load up on things that potentially I'll use for this recipe. Jackpot right there. And now we're ready for some Indian cooking back to the studio. Every epic sandwich starts with the perfect bread base, and the Vada Pao absolutely nails it. You've got a nice little fluffy roll, like a milk bread or a slider. And I love making slider rolls because they're small, they look really cool, they're fluffy, and they are packed with flavor. So we're gonna make the traditional style pow that you would see on the streets of Mumbai, and the star of the show is definitely milk, and then you got a little addition of some butter. So to make these pow, first I'm gonna start off with some more milk, around 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then two teaspoons of yeast with two teaspoons of sugar to help activate that yeast and also add a little bit of sweetness to the pow. I added about a quarter cup of flour and gave that a mix before letting it activate for 15 to 30 minutes. Once the mixture was visually fluffy and I really could smell the yeast blooming, that's when I went in with the rest of my dry ingredients. So I added my flour and salt to a sifter and just sifted that into the wet ingredients to make sure everything was nice and fluffed up. I took my dough whisk and started bringing the dough together, but I noticed it was pretty dry at this point, so I decided to increase the hydration by adding just a bit of water, which might make the process a little stickier, but you will end up with a fluffier final product. Once the dough came together, it was time to knead it out, and you can see it's super sticky here to start, but when you just keep working the dough and letting it rest and working the dough, you're giving the gluten time to bond and your dough will start to come together. Finally, I added butter to the dough and kneaded that together until everything was incorporated and the dough was super soft. Working with flour and making dough can be a bit overwhelming. You saw how sticky that was. Some people would just freak out and quit it. If it's ever feeling out of control, a great tip is just to chill on it. Let it relax, let the glutens relax. You'll see if you come back to the dough in like 15 minutes, it will completely change textures. The gluten's gonna have some time to relax and it's gonna be much easier to work with. You can see how nice and soft this is right here. So now that our butter's added and this is super soft and supple we'll let this rise until it's doubled in size So now I'm gonna weigh these and cut them into even sizes so I can roll them and let them proof into buns. For this recipe, I would have needed an eight inch pan and I have a nine inch square pan. And I want these buns to basically be touching before they proof because that way they're gonna use each other to rise up and not rise out. I want a tall, fluffy bun, not a super wide bun for this recipe. So I had to just reinforce the walls to ensure that will happen. So these are going to proof for about an hour until they have fluffed up and then we'll bake them off. Now this is what I'm talking about. See how those rows, they used each other to sort of rise up. They're almost more square now, and that's what I was going for. So I'm just gonna milk wash these up and throw them in the oven. Here we go. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Put in the love to your bread. It gives you love back. Ah. 
I wanna take a quick break from the Vodapal to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Felix, the lighting company that actually provided all of the lights for this studio. But rather than me sit here and tell you about lighting, I wanted to bring in a real professional to tell you why this Felix system is so awesome. So Jim, what makes this track lighting system um, a great option for other YouTubers, other creators out there like myself? I think, uh, I think an obstacle other content creators nowadays online are facing is uh, how do I up my production value in an efficient and affordable way. Um, and a lot of times content creators don't even realize that they may have to increase their production value. But as uh, the online video creation market becomes more and more competitive, uh, I think it's more and more important. The product that we have that can uh, address this obstacle is our track lighting fixtures. Uh, these are easy to use, simply installed fixtures that run off a, uh, a track system. So aesthetically, it looks really nice. Um, and you can control all your fixtures from a singular control unit. Uh, they're fully tunable, uh, so you can take any kind of non-traditional studio space and turn it into a functioning studio like what we did here with Pro Home Cooks. And when I first moved into this place, I thought I'd be bringing in all of these lights, having them all over the ground, but having everything up on the ceiling, on the tracks, it's just more room for activities, more room for fun. <laughs> and it also comes across as more professional. You're getting stands off the ground, no loose wires. So again, we're able to take a highly functioning product into a non-traditional space and not only light it beautifully, but also make it look really nice as well. Awesome, thank you, Jim. So if you're interested in Felix, click the link below in the description for more information. Indian food is all about packing in the flavor. It's all about the spice and balancing all of those flavors as well. And one sauce that I feel like is essential for the sandwich to really balance out those flavors and bring that tang is the tamarind chutney. So we're gonna use some fresh tamarind. These are tamarind pods right, oh, these are tamarind pods right here with the fresh tamarind in there, check that out. And this stuff is like a natural sour patch, kids. It's super sour, but we're gonna make a chutney or a sauce out of this. But because there's so many elements to this sandwich, I'm just gonna briefly run through this chutney, so cue the tasty style video. So the recipe for the green chutney couldn't be easier. Basically, you just take all these ingredients and you throw them in a food processor and you're done. We've got mint, cilantro, some green chilies. I de-seeded these because they were super spicy, but do whatever you want. Garlic cloves, ginger, a little bit of cumin seeds, and some lemon juice. Because I added the water, it's just a little watery, so there's two ingredients you can add to thicken it up a bit. Traditionally, some fried up dal would work great, but if you don't have this, you can also just use a little bit of bread. So we're gonna use our rolls. Add a few pieces of that in there, a little bit of salt, and just to make sure it's extra creamy, The sandwich is such a great example of Indian street food, specifically with the amount of chutneys that get piled onto this one sandwich and the different style of chutneys. We've already made the cooked sweet and sour chutney. We've got the fresh herb chutney. And this next chutney we're gonna make is something that I've never made before, but I'm really excited for it because it's a dry roasted chutney. Not that this sandwich really needs any more flavor, but this dry garlic chutney is really gonna give it a spicy punch. 
This chutney is so simple to make. I started off by adding some oil to a pan and frying up a bunch of cloves of garlic. And the garlic will mellow out as you toast it, so go as intense as you want with the garlic cloves. And once the garlic is nice and toasted, I added in my peanuts and toasted those for a few minutes. You could toast everything separately, which a lot of recipes tell you to do, but when you're making everything from scratch, I just don't have the time for that. So just make sure it's on a low heat so you don't burn the garlic. And we're just gonna keep adding ingredients. All right, so I added in some coconut flakes, a little bit of cumin and coriander seeds, and some sesame seeds, and just kept that toasting on a medium low heat for about five minutes until my studio smelled like heaven. Beautifully toasting. You can see some of that coconut has browned up. The peanuts are toasted. We're ready to go into the food processor. That is amazing. That is just flavor right there. But flavors coming together that are unique, that I've never tried together. And finally, after three chutneys, we are ready to make the vada part of this sandwich, which is a potato fritter. So I have some potatoes here that I boiled and just smashed up. Of course, because this is Indian food, we need much more flavor in these potatoes. So we're gonna fry these up with a bunch of spice, then we're gonna coat them in a chickpea batter and deep fry them. Before we get started on the masala potatoes, we need to create the foundation and flavor in this dish and so many other Indian dishes, which is a ginger garlic paste. And to make it, all you gotta do is smash these two things together. And there you go. To a pan, I added some mustard oil that I got at the market, but you can add whatever oil you have. And then some mustard seeds. And once those seeds started popping, I threw in my curry leaves to fry up. Now's the time you can add the ginger garlic paste. And I cooked that down for about a minute until it started to soften. And then I added a little bit of turmeric powder and just cooked everything together on a low heat to really develop all of those flavors. Once everything toasted up for a few minutes, I added in my cooked potatoes and the key is to cook the potatoes long enough so they mash together and create a nice texture. But also as they cook, they're gonna lose a lot of that excess moisture, which is good for when you're frying them up because you don't want extra water in your potatoes or you're gonna have a problem when it comes to getting these things crispy. And right here is the perfect consistency. So I threw the potatoes in the fridge to cool down and made a really quick batter of some chickpea flour and water. Alex just told me that rice flour or cornstarch will make this a little crispier, this batter. I don't have rice flour, so I'm just adding a little bit of cornstarch and then we'll add a little more water. All right, so our oil is up to temperature. We're about 360, 370, but it's gonna drop down to 350. So yeah, so we're gonna take our potato patties. Pat no, they're not patties, potato balls. Golf ball patties. Fritters. Probably use this to lower it in so we don't burn ourselves. These look great, but I've decided that I just wanna fry them again, a twice fry at a higher temperature just to give them that final crisp. Back in you go, just for like. what I'm talking about. So if you saw in the Bombay sandwich video of the sandwich series, I made sev, and that's pretty much what this is. It's just the chickpea flour batter. And I think if I put it through, oh, it's working. Amazing. I'm just putting it through a slotted spoon and it's creating these little balls. And sev is just like a stringier, thinner version of this. Look at that. All 
right, so we have Priya back in action. She's come to the studio. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you're here to sample my own version of the Vata Pau. I learned a lot from you. Got a lot of good flavor inspiration. So this is what we've come up with. Alex is gonna plate it. Wow, that looks yummy. Okay. It needs a little smashing just because, yep. Yeah, because it's not gonna fit in my mouth. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my God. I'll let you, I know it's a lot of flavors, so take your time. You know what, Mike? I think you're gonna give me a run for my money. Oh yeah? yeah. <laughs> what do you like about it? I actually like how you kept the garlic chutney chunky because mm. I can feel that texture in my mouth. I love your chutney, the freshness, the vibrance, and the sweet and the spicy together is, oh my God. I gotta say, the tamarind chutney was definitely inspired by you, and that is my favorite. Mm -hmm. This right here, like everyone, I've had people just sampling this, they're freaking out. Mm -hmm. It really, it's not, you know, I was saying Indian ketchup, but it's more like Indian barbecue sauce. It is, it is. So I get asked for ketchup alone in the restaurant, I'm like, no, try tamarind sauce. <laughs> That's it. But I think you're gonna be able to open up a little Indian spot here. You know, for me, I love making Indian recipes and I get a lot of support on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think people are really excited when someone's doing like more traditional style and not just, you know, yeah. a shitty version of 100%. Indian food. 100%, not Americanizing it, yeah. You know what I really like about this sandwich? Now I can talk about it since mm -hmm. we ate them yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, you're eating it, you're not missing the meat, but it's very light. Like after I didn't feel like it weighed me down and I think it's the vegetarian and all the fresh sauces. Yeah. Is that like? That's exactly what it is. That's the idea. Nothing is processed about this dish. Yeah, love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, um, thank you for coming by. I appreciate it. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at Desi Gully. I have two spots, 101 Lexington, 172 Avenue B in New York City. Okay, so if you're in New York, make sure you take a stop at Desi Gully. Yeah, it's and I'll delicious. probably be around. She's there. She's cooking. I'm cooking. I'm <laughs> cooking. I'm going to put my hair in a bun and I'm cooking. All right, later.